Thank you for joining us today for our session on the application level optimizations that we've been working on with, uh, with Vija and his team from American Airlines. Um, first of all, I'm super excited to be here. I'm from the Bay Area, and uh, I thought the traffic was bad in the Bay Area, but after going through the Paris traffic this morning, I'm very excited to be here and that I've made it. Um, here, uh, my name is Marcus Fluel. I, live, I, I lead Intel Developer Cloud as well as Intel Cloud Services, uh, which also includes um, Intel uh, Granulate, uh, an acquisition that we did a couple of years ago. And uh, we'll talk about some of the work that we've done. Uh, a little bit about myself, um, I'm based in the Bay Area, uh, used to work for NVIDIA, uh, came over to Intel a couple of years ago, but NVIDIA had uh, implemented in, um, NVIDIA's GPU cloud infrastructure. Um, and coming over to Intel, the focus has been on Intel Cloud Services. Um, with me, first of all, let me introduce Vijay Prem Kumar. Uh, my good friend who we've been working with for many, many, many years. Vijay, do you want to introduce yourself? Thank you, Marcus. It's truly my pleasure to speaking with you on the Kubernetes journey we are in. It's something that is a story to be told. It's a game changer for American Airlines, and we have been very successful with the journey. And to tell the story with Intel makes it even much better. You and your team at Intel, with the development you're doing in the software space has been simply interesting, and more importantly, you're pleasantly surprised. Thanks, Vijay. And thanks for joining us. Yeah, so why is Intel talking about application performance? A lot of you know us as the people who are building the chips and maybe build a little bit of firmware on top of that. Uh, but over the last few years, we've, we've dramatically increased our investment um, in the software development, but then also into building various cloud solutions on top of that. Because we realize that at the end of the day, what matters is the value that you're getting out of our hardware and whether that's coming from just the lower levels of the chip by adding more, more instructions, more offloads, or by adding more cores, or whether it's the, the cloud service, at the end of the day, what matters is how much application performance are you getting out of that. And there's a number of different areas that we're investing. Um, one of the areas, I mean, you know, the sign of, at the end of the day, what we're trying to do is really solve your, your higher level business problem. And at the high level, some of the problems that, that we custom constantly hear from customers is that they are not being successful implementing their, their IT projects. And that's an area that, you know, with, by building out our Intel Developer Cloud, we're trying to give you much earlier access to our hardware and our software so you can de-risk things and implement and, and find some of these issues earlier. The next area of investment is, is, of course, on the security side, where we're seeing that, you know, data breaches are becoming much more prevalent and, and much more costly. And, uh, and also with, you know, a lot of the work that's going on in AI, we expect that that threat vector is only going to get worse and there's going to be new threat vectors that are going to be coming in. And uh, last but not least, a lot of people, a lot of you have quickly moved into the cloud. They're very, you're very happy about the, the, the speed at which you're moving, the elasticity and all the other benefits of cloud. Uh, but at the same time, your, your CFO or your finance people are chasing you and, and they're upset because of the money that you're spending on cloud. So these are some of the areas that we're trying to address in addition to some of the low level work that we're doing on the hardware and all the fabs and everything else that we're doing as a company. Um, and so, um, so the one first area is, as I mentioned, the Intel Developer Cloud. Um, this is what I built up after coming in from NVIDIA. And the idea is that uh, we're building out the latest and greatest, not just CPUs, uh, but increasingly a big focus on, on, our, on our accelerators. And uh, we're making that available, not just after the, the harder ships, but oftentimes six or 12 months even before the harder ships. So that means, you know, you can come into the Developer Cloud today, you get access to our latest, uh, to the next generation CPUs, to our next generation accelerators, you get access to all the software stack that's running on top of it. You bring in your workloads, you know, ISVs comes in, come in, they can test their, their, um, their workloads. Uh, we work also with cloud providers, they come in, you know, a lot of cases they have PaaS and SaaS services that they offer, and they can test that six or 12 months prior to us actually shipping the hardware. And then even after we ship the hardware, oftentimes it takes another six or 12 months for the CSPs to pick up. So you get essentially a sneak pre preview into the future and you can start optimizing uh, much earlier than, than what you used to. Um, the other area of investment is around, um, is around security, as I mentioned, uh, with our Intel Trust Authority. And I will talk about that in, in a little bit. And then the third area, that's what we're gonna be focused on today, is really on the, on the on granulate, on our autonomous performance uh, optimization service. And uh, this is where we, we brought in um, Granulate a couple of years ago, um, uh, Israeli-based startup. Um, Asaf, who's sitting here in the front, is, is actually the founder and uh, will come up on stage later. 
Um, and it's an area that is super critical for us because I think we can, we can, we can add a lot of value to our customers by, by providing these services. Um, essentially, at a high level, the way I think about it is that you know, we as a company, we've been investing thousands of engineers are optimizing Kubernetes, they've been contributing to the Linux kernel, they're contributing to various uh, you know, PyTorch, TensorFlow, a lot of the open source uh, frameworks. Um, and with Granulate, we have an outlet where we can make those optimizations available to our customers very, very quickly. It doesn't mean that we're gonna continue to, to make those optimizations available and continue to upstream those, but in addition to that, we can give those optimizations to our customers early on and help optimize, optimize their, 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 their workloads uh, years before some of these changes will actually be available as, as the next generation of, of in, in open source. So it's a tremendous, um, super excited about this area and it's super critical, I think, for, for a lot of our customers. Um, so a little bit more detail on the, on the developer cloud. What are we doing there? Um, before we jump into the details of Granulate, um, it's, it's, as I said, you know, we built it out, we're making tremendous investments. Um, especially in the AI, in the days of AI, and as we're building out these accelerators, it's not just about one virtual machine and a few CPU cores. Of course, we make that available and then it helps our customers come in and, and test that out. Uh, but also when it comes to some of these AI workloads, uh, if you wanna run a large training job, you need to run this on a large training cluster. And that means you know, we are building out some of these large training clusters with thousands of our accelerators, and you can bring in your workloads and test those out early. We have, of course, a number of free options but then you also have commercial option where you can come in and, and rent an entire cluster. And you also allow us then, if you're seeing what, what if, if, you're, if you like what you're seeing, uh, it's not just only a sandbox, you can use it as a sandbox, but then we can also, we allow you to also come in and, de and, and deploy your workloads and, and run your workloads there uh, for production as well. Um, with Intel Trust Authority, the main threat vector we're trying to, to address here is any kind of supply chain attacks. And what we do is we're allowing to be using our uh, trusted domain extensions with a trusted execution environment. And the fundamental problem we're trying to solve is we want you to be able to run your workloads and we give you out of station, we give you the insurance that what you're running is the hardware that you think you're running on, as well as all the software components that are running on top of that, that these are the components that, that, um, that, that, you, that, that are really there. And that, you know, your supply chain, nobody has swapped out the hardware uh, or somebody snuck in some malicious code that you don't expect and that, that is gonna harm you. That's the problem we're trying to solve. And uh, this is what we have available today. Uh, we already have a set of customers using it. And uh, as we're building out more of our newer generation hardware, that means uh, we, can, we can provide at a station for all of the workloads that are running out there. Um, so with that, let's just focus in now on what we're doing specifically with Granlate and specifically with, um, with uh, American Airlines. Uh, let me just start out, Vijay, asking you, how has it been going working with Intel? It's been a fantastic journey, uh, and it's been about the partnership. It, I think it's about 25 plus years, Intel and AI have been in this partnership mode, and uh, mutually beneficial to both organizations. And when I say the partnership, the way it works is uh, we are IT community, which is Intel's account team, to tap into their extensive knowledge on the software and hardware, help us uh, overcome some of the business challenges we face. So the big benefit to our IT community to learn from the one of the best and help us you know, overcome those challenges and deliver value to our you know, application teams. Okay. And um, obviously, you know, we're in the high-tech industry. We've had lots of ups and downs over the last uh, decades. But uh, you know, being in the travel industry, it feels like we're, we're in a cocoon here. Uh, what are the kind of problems that uh, we've been able to, to address with you? Yeah, definitely, Marcus. Uh, last 25 years has been uh, extremely challenging. We have seen lots of ups and downs, especially in the travel industry and also in other industries specifically, right? Whether it's COVID or 9-11 or, you know, Great Recession. We had a great impact on any of those, you know, scenarios, right? So as a traditional company, we have investments across multiple data centers in our compute, and we'll heavily rely on amazing partnership like Intel to optimize our application runtime and we have been doing this for the last 20 plus years with Intel. And by optimizing an application runtime, we're able to you know, uh, deploy our workloads in a more efficient way so we get the best value for the investment we've made in data center. Especially during the you know, difficult years, those investments pays off in a very nice way. Okay. What were some of the key activities that, that you're currently pursuing? Yeah, so uh, Marcus, uh, currently as we know in the last few years, uh, the partnership heavily focused on two aspects. One, 
we continue to you know, partner on the runtime optimization, whether it's a data center applications or whether it's a, you know, cloud uh, native, we can do that. The second is about the cost optimization. So both cost optimization and the application runtime has been the foundation, fundamental in all our aspects of relationship. Now, beyond that, what we are trying to now build relationship is on the next frontier. For example, uh, we all know AI has a great role to play at American Airlines, especially in the travel industry. And um, we see a tremendous opportunity in front of us to tap into the outcome what AI could do for us, either from a customer you know, experience to enhance that, or to the operational excellence. The possibilities are endless. So we have been partnering with Intel's AI data scientist, Dr. Mel and team. Uh, he has been uh, visiting our office uh, every you know, frequent, uh, once in every you know, couple of months to help onboard our engineers, AI engineers, uh, to, uh, to the right way of building the code and building the, solving the right business cases. So that partnership is in ongoing. And also, you talked about the IDC. It's a pretty interesting concept. So while we look at uh, you know, building the right architectural principle, that way our workloads could be deployed in the most you know, right way. So IDC provides an opportunity like a company like AA, where we could test out the best in class software and hardware uh, with our workloads and benchmark it and prove it ready to deploy in our uh, cloud uh, CSP. So that enables us to do quicker, faster, easier way to bring in the solution to our business community. Great. Thanks, Vijay. Do you want to talk a bit about, more about like your architectural principles, like in terms of how you approached your cloud environment build out? Yeah, so definitely before I talk through our cloud environment, I want to you know, level set how the journey began. So, I mean, until two, before, I would say until you know, uh, four years ago, predominantly our workload has been in the data center. So what it meant is we had five plus data centers and we had you know, complex uh, uh, big data solutions uh, hosted there. While we continue our cloud journey, which started about three, four years ago, we continue to see the data silos, which means we are not able to process them very efficiently to serve our business community. That's when about two years ago, we started an uh, organization called Cloud Engineering Platform. Under our leader, Rasika, she kept the focus on four important aspects. One, we set up the Cloud Center of Excellence and the community of practice. Second, we define the Cloud Platform Innovation as an as independent unit. Third, we set up the right governance uh, policies in the cloud. And four, of course, you know, focusing on the cost organizations. Keeping those as the focal point, our organization and our team we were able to go after the four you know, major goals we were you know, targeting. One, putting the CCOE framework and bringing the COP simply enabled and brought in the collaboration aspect and sharing the knowledge between our application team. Second, setting the cloud platform innovation opened up the engineering excellence mindset of our engineers so they could go after new and uh, new age solutions just like Ganulate while we were able to onboard it, right? Third, putting the governance principles helped us to have the resilient, reliable, secure policies set up from the, you know, from a core perspective. And four, of course, you know, we want to make sure every dollar we invest in our uh, now CSP or data center, we get the most outcome out of it. So the focus areas and the goals uh, clearly defined helps us and our engineering team to get the value for our business community. So now I want to hear speak about the two major areas where in the last two years our growth has been. Like I mentioned previously, most of our you know, workloads have been in the data center for the big data. So last two years, there has been a tremendous growth into the cloud. Obviously, we all know big data solutions, data lakes are very expensive, extensive, and complex, right? So while that continued to grow, while our business was getting the outcome, we were facing challenges. The challenges came from the cost perspective. Now, the second most, you know, fastest growing environment is the Kubernetes platform, what we built in. Kubernetes, we all we know that, it, you know, it's complex and it provides a value and it could, you know, grow exponentially as well. So both big data, data lake solution and the Kubernetes, the two fastest are also the most expensive and putting cost pressure to us. So that was a challenge we were facing. So while we're facing those challenges, and uh, like we you know, reached out to Intel account team to see is there a solution we can go after. 
while we were working with Intel's account team to see if there are solution, we were parallel looking at other industry, you know, optimized solution that was in the market. So at that time, about two years ago, Intel suggested uh, to look into a company called Granulate, and a little bit of, you know, background story here, uh, Granulate at that point was an independent company, and Intel referred us a more like a partnership mode, knowing that Intel will not make any revenue out of it. And eventually, Granulate was purchased by Intel, which is just, you know, after a few months later. So my team, um, Vamshi Shravan, Ishan, and many more, you know, worked with uh, Intel's, um, you know, Granulate team to test it out, the Granulate software in our, you know, big data solution. And uh, the testing, uh, along with the, you know, comparison with other, pro other solutions, did the whole nine yard, and they choose the Granulate to be implemented in our big data to begin with. And we started the implementation non-prod about, you know, 12, 14 months ago. Today, it's 100% in our production and non-prod, about 1,300 plus clusters. We have been successfully implemented. And as you could see in the graph, uh, we are about 37% fewer resources um, than what it was previously. And that resulted in about 23% cost savings in our data lake solution. It's been a fantastic journey on that. So while we achieved that in the data lake and the big data solution, our journey continued uh, with the granulate on our Kubernetes environment. So the team last few months has been benchmarking Kubernetes uh, workloads and comparing granulate with other, other optimized solutions in the market. And um, the non-prod testing so far has been very interesting and the outcome has been you know, very satisfying to American Airlines. Just curious, BJ, how did you pick granulate versus other solutions? So, as I said, cost is important. That was the starting point. We were facing, you know, extremely high cost pressures. So the reason we went after the market to look for solution was it solving the cost problem. While like Granulate, many companies provided that, you know, cost, you know, solutions, the unexpected or the, you know, the additional benefit we, what we got from Granulate is the runtime optimization and, you know, performance improvement, which was unexpected for us. And second, the benchmarking we did with other, you know, solution did not provide the same outcome. So for us, it's, you know, going after cost was one thing, but getting two additional benefits was, you know, huge win for us. One other question here, like a lot of customers are like, great, you're getting all these performance enhancements, but how much effort is it to, to get there? And how, you know, operationally does it fit into my operations environment? Like what, what's the pain I have to go through in order to get all these optimizations? Yeah, so good question, Marcus. So any of this requires some, you know, commitment from engineering team for sure. Um, so in our case, our engineering team was committed to partner with um, you know, Granulate team. And from a Granulate perspective, as you know, it takes about two weeks uh, to discover, to provide an outcome saying what is the potential AV that can come. So it was easy plug and play, and the portal was very you know, easy to navigate, and the, we were able to get the data. And then it's up to us at that point, based on the outcome what we see in the portal, we choose to optimize. That's when, you know, the, that's the optimization for outcome. So the implementation was pretty, you know, straightforward and easy to partner with to get it going. In addition to, to, um, to your data lake, I think you've done a lot of other optimizations as well with Kubernetes, I believe. Yes, correct. So it started the Kubernetes journey on the non-prod. And again, just to put some, you know, background on the Kubernetes, right? As I mentioned previously, it's our, you know, the second fastest growing environment in American Airlines. And we want to ensure that we remain focused on the three major principles that we are committed to our application, our, you know, our leadership. One, of course, you know, we want to provide the 99.99% SLA to our application community. Third, um, the growth, what you're seeing is nothing. That this year, we are projected to go 3x more. That means tremendous amount of application, you know, leaning on to our shared cluster to onboard into that. And third, we want to continue to provide 100% you know, self-service. That means ease for the application team to deploy their you know, workloads and get the outcome using our uh, shared cluster. Keeping this as a priority and a focus area, we ensure that any tooling we bring in doesn't compromise on the quality and the, you know, the objective what we laid out. So just to give a landscape of our you know, Kubernetes tech stack, like many of you know, it's, it's complex and unique and very special to you all. In our case, also, it's very special. Our engineers has spent you know, years to build this, right? We are primarily Azure, aka shop on the Kubernetes. 
and uh, we use the Argo CD for the you know the for the CI CD pipeline. We use the Kuma service mesh. We, have, we use the Rancher control plane, and we also the home ground um, UI, which we call Runway, which is the self service portal. And we also use the you know the custom MANA controllers uh, uh, to integrate across the uh, solution. Uh, while all this is in there and many more, we are able to plug in the Intel Gantlet solution without disrupting the ecosystem. Again. Our objective is cost saving is one thing, but not at the cost of SLA, not at the cost of you know delaying our application team to self-service or impacting our you know outcome what we committed to the application team. So given all those things, Gantlet was able to plug in without any disturbance to our ecosystem, which was our you know huge you know uh, expectation from the team. Right. And now. In the last, uh, I would say, you know, few months, uh, installing the granulate uh, agent in our non-prod um, Kubernetes cluster, this is the outcome we have seen. We have seen about 40 to 45 percent cost savings, and um, the best part is the additional benefits. Right, we are getting a 30 percent in a job time reduction and 20 percent throughput increase. And that's the second and the third on the, are the you know, additional benefits which we never you know, expected from other solutions. We were not getting it, right? And the most importantly, we could get all those things with zero code change. Isn't it a beautiful thing? It is. <laughs> Sign me up. <laughs> yeah, and just to add to this, I mean, we also were using Granlite, of course, extensively inside of Intel. And we're seeing very, very similar results, both in our data lake environment as well as on our, our Kubernetes environment. And again, as I mentioned in the beginning, and of course, there's a lot of other customers that are, that are seeing similar kind of results. So it's not like VJ is a complete outlier, and that's why it's here. <clears throat> but this is a very typical improvement that, that we're seeing. And again, the thing to note here, it's, this is not like, you know, these are customers that have not done any optimizations at all, and they're just picking up the low-hanging fruits here. These are additional optimizations that they're getting after they've already applied a lot of the other tools, right? Because it's a different dimension, right? When you think about this CloudWatch, there's a lot of other tools that allow you to have low hang, you know, address low hanging fruits, like optimizing your instance types within your CSP or doing other kind of, you know, detecting idle workloads. What we're doing here, it's really about minimizing the footprint of your application. And that's why, I mean, it's very non-intuitive to say, I, I'm, I'm gonna get more performance, but I have to spend less money on it. How is that possible? Most of the time, it's the opposite. I'm going to add more resources. I'm going to add more, more, uh, more, more overhead and more, more headroom, and that's what's guaranteeing my application performance. Here, it's it's the opposite. It's like you know we're, we're shrinking things down. We're shrinking down the footprint. We're making it fundamentally more efficient, and that means yes, you're getting more performance, but it also means that that you're spending less money money on it. And I think that's that's really something that that I think is is really a, a very compelling message. And this is something again, as I mentioned in the beginning. Uh, this is the beginning of the journey. It's only been uh, two years since, since uh, a staff and team came to us, and Granlite came to us. Um, going forward, a lot of the work that we're doing across all these different areas, there's thousands of engineers that we have optimizing different parts of the stack, and a lot of these optimizations are going to be expressed early through Granlite. And so we expect that over time that some of these optimizations that we can do uh, through Granlite will actually increase in, in the magnitude. Um, yeah, so just to summarize what, what we're able to address, um, Vijay talked about the data lake that he's been able to optimize, and that's something, you know, I think it's, it's, it's where we, we, we just shine, and, and, you know, typically within a week or two, we're able to demonstrate what kind of in, in performance enhancements we're able to achieve. And, um, and then, of course, as Vijay said, you know, this is a, <clears throat> just like with Intel, you know, oftentimes there's uh, security views and other things, but, you know, but typically those, those improvements, we, can, we, can, we will show up very, very quickly and your next cloud build can already reflect that. Um, the second area, as Vijay mentioned, was Kubernetes. Um, that's another key area of focus, and that's, again, where we as Intel, we have a lot of investment, a lot of optimizations that we're doing on the Kubernetes side that going forward will be available through, through Granulate. And then third is just those runtime optimizations. This means you know, your, your Java workloads, it could be a custom workload. This is not just a, an off-the-shelf third-party hardware, a software. Uh, that you're buying, but this is also for your own custom workloads that we can also optimize here with Granlite, and uh, and uh, and we're continuing to invest in that as well. Um, yeah, so in terms of um, some of the things we're doing here, one is again, you know, with Kubernetes, is really you know optimizing the footprint there, and um, and eliminating any kind of waste. Um, so in this particular example, you know, this is a customer they were running like 5,000 cores initially. Uh, they, they were they were um, they had a lot of lot of extra. Uh, um, um, a lot of extra uh, 
compute power essentially dedicated just, just, just for, for, for the overhead. And with Granlite, we're able to shrink it down significantly without impacting uh, the SLA. Um, and then the runtime optimization, meaning we can optimize everything from the application layer through Kubernetes, these things are all the way down into the infrastructure layer. Um, those things are all additive, um, and, and that's where we get the additional optimizations. Um, in addition to the optimizations, the other thing, of course, that's important is the observability. Um, people need to understand what's going on in their, in their environment. There's a production workload, super critical. Um, Vijay, do you want to talk about that a little bit and how you're leveraging yeah. Granlight for that? Definitely. So, like the screen says, that is actually it's the outcome out output from our own, you know, implementation. So, providing the full customization and visibility of clusters. As a customer, I could pick and choose what we want to enable and what kind of configuration we need. So, empowering ourselves to do, you know, the outcome what we expected with the partnership was a beautiful thing. Okay. Thanks, Vijay. Yeah, and then last but not least, um, it's, you know, again, through the efficiency is really making sure that the, that the SLAs are being met. And a lot of cases what we're seeing is that even though we're driving the efficiency um, and we're squeezing out costs, <clears throat> the SLAs typically actually end up getting better and be able to better meet them uh, than prior to, to applying, to applying uh, Granlight. Um, yeah, so before we jump into, into Q&A here, just a quick summary in terms of how Intel, what we're doing as a company. Um, as I mentioned earlier, through the developer cloud, we are making, uh, providing that early access um, to, to our hardware and our software. And we're doing this not just for our CPUs, but we're doing this across the different uh, product lines, including our accelerators um, that you can go in and test out. And the same thing, you know, not just the hardware, but also all the software components that you can test drive early on. And not just you as, as, as an end customer, uh, but also the OS vendors will come in. Uh, hypervisor folks, they can come in and they can use things at the bare metal layer. Uh, we have other people that, you know, they, 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 they want a bare metal system. We have, we have folks that would just want a virtual machine. And then we have a managed Kubernetes as well. And then with Converge, we also have an ML ops solution um, that you can also test drive. So you can come in at the different layers of the stack. You can run it across different layers of uh, the different types of hardware. Um, <clears throat> right now, we are predominantly, a uh, developer cars predominantly located in, in North America. We're in the process of now expanding also into, into Asia and into Europe. Um, so we expect to do that over the next, over the next, uh, throughout this year. <clears throat> With Intel Trust Authority, we're addressing some critical threat factors um, around the security. And then of course, with, with Granlate, uh, we are addressing the performance challenges. Um, so with that, before we open up for Q&A, maybe just the last question for Vijay, what, what is next for you in this journey with us? The journey will continue and, and, and continue. So we got our outcome from the, like we spoke about the big data and Kubernetes, it's you know, almost done. Next, we're gonna continue work, this engagement on our you know, data center workloads. We have you know, several thousand VMs in a data center. We want to partner to get that also optimized. And then we also have workloads in the, in the uh, CSP, in the cloud provider, which is non-data you know, bricks related. We want to optimize that as well. While all this is going on, we're gonna tap into the IDC uh, to get the, you know, the architectural principles you know, rightly done. That way we could be from day zero, get the most outcome for our you know, benefits. But um, I continue to challenge Marcus and Asaf and team to bring in the A plus team to LPA to get the outcome what we desired. And we truly appreciate the partnership. Thank you, Marcus, and Asaf and team. Appreciate it. Thank you, Vijay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> We can just ask the team to come up here, so. Yeah, we'd like to invite Asaf, Vamshi, Shravan, and Ishan. Um, so, please. Yeah, the way we do things is that we get all the easy questions, the tough questions go to these guys, so just to be clear. But then, any questions? I'll ask Vijay a question. So uh, we, we work for really large companies. How do you get the, the right support, the right confirmations to work with so many startups like you do? Thank you, Asaf. And uh, just to put some perspective here, right? Um, like I talked about the vision, the strategy, our leader Asika laid out. So we clearly marked ourselves as a cloud platform innovation, as a independent unit. So I was fortunate to lead that, organ that unit that gave me and my team 
the authority to go after solutions that never possible before American Airlines and a company like traditional American Airlines, right? So that enabled me to go after startups like, you know, in this case, Granulate, with in a partnership with Intel, and many more. And just to put some perspective, we, we have been dealing with uh, 40 plus different startups, and we onboarded about eight of them in production. And thanks to my you know, partner, Vamshi, he has been an architect along this journey with me, along with Shravan and Ishan and many more, right? So it's the leadership vision to have a, earmarked a dedicated independent unit, and that enabled me to go after those. Thank you. Thank you. Hi there. Um, so the Granulate platform sounds really good, but what's it got missing at the moment that you would like it like to see it have going forward? So I think that's for uh, the AA, uh, please. Yeah, sorry we didn't catch that. Do you mind repeating that? Please. Yeah, sure. Um, what, Granulate platform today sounds very good, useful for American Airlines, but what would you like to see it have in terms of capabilities going forwards that, that it, you think that it may have missing? Which are any enhancements that you're looking for? Um, I would say, you know, like I mentioned, uh, our team has went through extensive analysis, several platforms, several tools in the market. Uh, in fact, we are very, you know, popular in the startup community. And Granted provided more than what we expected. Um, if, uh, if you ask me what else, um, I don't have an answer at this point. But uh, knowing me, um, uh, Asaf knows me very well, and so is Marcus. I continue to challenge them. They got used to our, you know, our way of operations. They always come with solution before asked questions. I think, Shravan, you want to add something here? I think since few weeks, we are working with Granulate extensively. So they are able to incorporate, like, the labels were not easily available, but they were able to add those as part of, uh, so that we could select the workload, so that the granulate optimization can be worked on on specific, uh, you know, workloads within all the Kubernetes clusters. And we can isolate what workloads we need to optimize and what not. Yeah. And uh, just to add on that note uh, that Shravan mentioned, um, I joined the team like much, like way later. But these are the pioneers, and um, working with them, it's, uh, it's been wonderful. Um, so with Granulate, basically, the, the best part that so far I've been working with the team uh, closely, um, implementing this in our non-prod at least, um, the best thing about Granulate is that it doesn't bother any existing, like running workloads and services. And as, as Marcus uh, mentioned, it basically shrinks and without hurting our SLA, that's the most important thing for us. Um, and then it, it's so easy, the implementation is so easy and the results are so fast that you can actually, we just project it, right? Uh, and then that's, that's the best, uh, I, I would say, optimization tool so far we have seen. Thank you. I just recommend try, trying it out yourself. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes. Excellent. Um, question a bit to one side. Uh, I noticed we've got some similarities with the way we kind of our organizational goals. Um, can you describe briefly how you, uh, what your organizational structure is for your cloud teams, for your infrastructure teams, um, what that looks like and what challenges you have and how you deal with them? Yeah, so it's a very good question, especially a traditional organization like us where we continue to have workloads in data center and aspiration to you know, ramp up in the cloud. It's a challenge. And there is no one size fits all or a proper size we could define it. But again, I'll go back to this slide where I spoke about the exact challenge what the question is about. We took a very difficult and you know, art stand. We are going to you know, carve out a clear focus areas, what we want to do in the cloud. While respecting the application workloads in data center. Like we talked about setting up the cloud center of excellence and community of practice. There's a huge benefit setting it up. It could be a small team, but by setting it up, you're basically empowering, enabling, 
a larger engineering community across your organization, then very clear, we are not going to solve all the problems that we may have, but we are going after the most important, the cost. Like I mentioned, let's go off from the cost, cost aspect first. If you solve the cost, then we get the money in, we can do more things. In our case, we solve the cost in many you know, complex areas, like we had a choice. We could have taken the most easy, simple application to implement granulate, but we took a different, different stance. We went of the most complex, most you know, used, most difficult big data solutions, right? We committed to that, and that helped us. And now we are going after the second most complex. Generally, it would be the reverse. You go after the most simple things. So the intention, the, vis the vision, the strategy from our leadership to our you know, you know, engineering folks has been single focused to go after the most complex problem. So the size of the team could vary, but the intention and the vision is more important. I would like to add to it, so because there are products, because every under, uh, I mean, what the cloud in, in engineering platform itself has every product as a platform. So we have platform as a products, and the innovation that was started under Vijay, you can see as innovation leader, for every product, innovate like a startup scale, like an enterprise. So that's the logo that he, that he has been setting into the products for all the teams, cloud teams, and there are architectural teams which we are like as part of architecture that spans across and the cloud uh, community of practice is a virtual that goes across the cloud teams and the products so that's how the structure has been laid out if we can uh, like if that's a question that uh... yeah that's great thanks 